Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a review for you of this little guy. This is a Spydeco Little Malaka. First off, I want to thank my buddy Eric for giving me a good deal on this one. Thank you very much there, Eric. Um, next thing, size comparison. Um, of course, here it is against Spydeco Delica. You can see the blade here is honestly uh, not that long. I mean, this is a small little knife. Um, it is notably thicker than the Delica by a pretty substantial margin, but it's not a very large knife by any stretch. Uh, here it is against the Spydeco Dragonfly, which is another smaller knife, and you can see that in terms of like measured blade length. They're about the same, but the little Nalaka packs in a fair amount more actual cutting edge. Um, right here against your Ontario Rat number 2, and Steel Wheel Cut Jack 3 inch. So that gives you a sense of the size. One thing that's new and interesting about this is the flash batch. This is what's called a flash batch, and this is the first time that Spydeco has done this. Uh, they did two of these this year, the uh, Don Dao, which is a big old sword thing, and then this little guy. And what this is is a short run of an entire model. You can see here that only 1,200 of these guys are being made, of which this is number 465. Um, this is different from the uh, sprint run approach that they've done previously, where they take an existing model and they put a new set of scales and a different steel on it and make those in limited numbers. This is an entire model that will go away after a certain number of things. Um, it gives them a chance to experiment. I think it's a cool idea. And so this is one of those. And uh, so they're going to sell out relatively quickly. Um, but they're still available at the time of filming this in November 2017. So uh, there you go. Next thing, this is the uh, same designer, actually, although this is a new model. It's based on a, a much bigger model, the uh, the Nalaka. This is the little Nalaka. This is the uh, the, 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 the big big one was called the Nalaka. And uh, they were both designed by one guy, Pekka Tuominen. He's a Finnish designer. And uh, so this is a very different kind of pocket, Pekka. Uh, uh, is it Pekka? Okay, anyways. But uh, same designer and same basic ethos as the full-size one. Then finally, this guy is being built at the Taichung factory over in Taiwan. So anyways, um, let's go ahead and jump into the good, the great, the bad, and the ugly of this little knife here. First, on the good side, um, it is a nice, small knife. Um, seriously, the size of this guy is tiny. It's going to be legal by most legal definitions, uh, you know, even in the most restrictive of cities, uh, as long as they're okay with locking knives, and so that's a beautiful thing, and it also provides a nice stylish and gentlemanly option. People are going to look at this guy and think, oh, well, that's kind of neat, or, oh, that's kind of weird, more likely, um, but they're not going to run for the hills and whatnot. Um, this is a stylish knife, and in some ways more so than, for instance, your dragonfly here. Um, this is a more stylish gentleman's folder than that is. So I, I kind of like that. And I like the fact that Spydeco is willing to make something that's very small and very sharp. We'll get to that in a little bit here. Um, next thing I got to say, um, the clip I like in some ways. It's a hot spot, but um, I like the fact that it's a very big clip. It sounds a little weird to say, um, but on a very small knife like this, you actually want a relatively large clip that helps to keep it in the pocket. Um, because this guy being a little on the heavy side will very easily jostle around. So having a wire clip, which works very well, um, on here is a very, very nice choice. So uh, next thing is there are some nice details on this guy. I mean, for instance, you can see that there are some nice contourings in here. So in here, getting into the spider hole, that's very nicely done. They've done some nice roundings on the edges of the G10 here all throughout. Um, you can see that there are nice flush fit screws here. I mean, every screw does not actually stick out past the G10, so it's pretty smooth in the hand and in the pocket. And uh, one little detail I noticed is take a look at the blade. There is actually a tiny little swedge here. On both sides, the blade narrows down, and then that swedge goes away as you get closer to the tip, which is already very, very small and fine. Um, but that's kind of a neat little thing, and it turns the blade from being a, you know, just little polygon into something a little bit more interesting and different. So I appreciate those little details. And then finally, um, probably the thing I appreciate most here is the fit and finish. This is a beautifully finished knife. Um, the Taichung Factory is very, very good at fit and finish. Probably Spydeco's best, although Golden's getting close these days. Um, but the thing is, it has some nice touch. For instance, this metal back here, guess what? That's three pieces of metal. Can you tell? No, not really. I mean, if you look very closely, you can see little tiny, you know, dings or something like that. Uh, but for the most part, this looks like a contiguous piece of metal, which is neat. And all of these edges here are very flush. See, you know, running your finger across here, you can't really feel the transitions, which is great. The centering is absolutely perfect on this guy, and it is very, very smooth. The Taichung plant does great work, and this is no exception. It's nice to see that even on a small batch, 
they're, they're doing really, really good QC and really, really good work. So, um, to me at least, that's what's good here is that the fit and finish is just great. Um, there are nice details on it. The wire clip works well given the size of it. Uh, it keeps this small guy in your pocket, and it does have a nice small size, which is a little bit more stylish than a lot of your smaller folders. To me, what's great about this guy, 100%, though, is the blade. Um, and I say that for two reasons. For starters, the steel is good. It's RWL34, uh, named after Bob Lovelace, actually, but it's a, a solid steel. It's a stainless steel, um, but it, it cuts very effectively. It takes a very brilliant edge, um, and then the edge on this guy is just unfathomably thin. It's it's incredible. This knife cuts like crazy. I mean, I can take just this, this entire little booklet, I mean, and this is a considerable amount of paper here, a newsprint, and it just, it goes right through it like freaking butter. It's incredible. I can cut into the spine and it still goes in like butter. Single sheets of paper, it just laughs at. This knife cuts like nobody's freaking business. Um, you know, I said the same thing about the full size in the locker, which had this same very aggressive flat grind all the way down to the bottom, but holy crap, is this a reminder of how crappy modern knives are at cutting things? You have this incredible edge on this guy, which you, you put this through cardboard and it's just like you can hear the knife laughing as it just slashes through like a freaking lightsaber. So I love, love, love this blade. This blade is spectacular, and it is absolutely great to me. Um, so that's that's the great, is that this knife just cuts like nobody's business. It's amazing. Next thing, uh, so in the bad side, that is, um, I am not in love, honestly, with the, uh, the, the huge signature blade branding on this guy. I mean, certainly, the, the, the maker can put whatever they'd like on the blade, but at another level, um, it's just, it's not all that classy. They've got a lot of writing on this blade, and this could be a very nice little gentleman's blade, so I wish they had done something a little bit different uh, with that, you know, made the, this whole area something closer to down here. I don't know. Um, there must have been a better way to do that, because as it stands, I'm not super impressed. I mean, heck, even, you got a whole bunch of space right here that's kind of boring. Throw it in there. Um, but, you know, not a huge deal. Next thing, the uh, white G10 or ivory or whatever you want to call it. I think they're probably calling it ivory. Um, does take stains over time. I mean, you can see at the edges of this, there are little bits of, and especially if you wear this with brand new blue jeans or something like that, G10 will definitely take on the, the, the coloration of other materials. And so, although I think it looks very attractive, White G10 will not stay white for long, and so something to keep in mind. Next thing, I gotta say, the proportions of this knife seem a little bit weird. I mean, you have a lot of handle and very, very little blade. I mean, seriously, um, you know, this much of the knife contains blade. Uh, the, the, the rest is just a big old thick backspacer here. And so it seems just a little bit weird. And unfortunately, that means that the balance on this knife is a little bit weird too. This knife balances all the way back here or so. And I'm not in love with that. I got to be honest with you here. I mean, I, I can see why they made the big chunk of backspacer and maybe it was more economical to not mill out the center portion or something like that. But honestly, the balance is very, very back heavy. I mean, I, I can see it being okay in some situations and this is kind of more of a matter of preference. But to me, at least, this just feels balanced very weirdly. Um, and so I'm not super, super in love with that. Um, next thing, uh, the ergonomics on this guy, speaking of this in the hand, they're just not great for me. Because the clip on this guy, although I like it very much for retention, makes this not, you know, this is definitely sticking up into the hand. And although it fills the hand a little bit more, uh, it's, you, you, with the wire clip, unfortunately, turns, if this were one smooth surface, it'd probably be a little better. But it turns this into two distinct areas of pressure, and I'm not super in love with that. I mean, the other thing about the ergos on this guy is that it is kind of easy to slide up onto the blade here. The whole knife is relatively thin, and so if you're doing it's kind of sorts of stabbing cuts, which would be really weird with this knife, but still, I, I do always worry as I take and put this into my hand that I'm going to slide too far and go onto this, oh my god, freaking sharp blade here. So that's something I'm not super in love with. The ergonomics on this guy, given that it's pretty blocky, just aren't, aren't doing it for me. Um, the knife is also a little bit thick. Let's just be real here. I mean, like I said, if we put this up next to the Delica, you can see here that this is a thicker knife by a decent margin. I mean, this knife is about as thick as the Ontario Rat number one, which is a knife that is very, very thick. I mean, even here next to the PM2, the, the PM2 is a little bit thinner than this knife is in the pocket. I understand if you're having these uh, very thick 
plates of G10 on here, um, which in do uh, which indeed do hide the screws. Uh, they make for the flush screws, but uh, I don't know. That just seems a little bit strange to me. Um, and I, the other uh, final issue on the bad side here is that the edge is fragile. Um, this is something that Spyderco ran into with the um, the, the full size Nalaka, and uh, this is something that Cedric Ada Gear and Outdoors, another YouTuber, ran into with his little Nalaka was using this guy to cut feather sticks and uh, ended up rolling the edge in a pretty substantial way. And honestly, I'm not surprised. This edge grind, although it is spectacular for cutting, is not going to be the most durable edge grind. This is a knife that will cut like crazy in soft and pliant materials, but it just really isn't meant for harder use. I mean, if you're doing anything that applies a rotational force to the edge of the blade, you, you run the risk of damaging it. And similarly, if you run into a nail or something, I can see this not do, doing so hard. Um, it's easy to sharpen back up uh, because of the steel, which is a nice, easy to sharpen steel. I probably should have said that earlier. But, I, you know, this is a blade that you need to use for very specific cases. This is meant to cut very, very, well, not very, very, but this is meant to cut softer materials very effectively, but it's not meant for cutting into harder materials or for weird kinds of forced cutting sorts of things. This is a purpose-built slicing beast. So um, that's something you're going to have to keep in mind with this guy. That edge is a little bit on the fragile side. But that's kind of the nature of the beast. When you buy a crazy slicer, you pay a little bit of a price. So um, anyways, there you go. Uh, that's the bad. And honestly, that's a very situational thing. I, I, I'm not quite sure... I mean, it's bad if you're looking for... Anyways, I, I digress. Um, the bad is that the edge is going to be fragile in some situations and uses. Um, it's a little bit thick. The ergos aren't great with a balance that's kind of weirdly far back on this guy. The proportions on it overall seem a little bit odd. The uh, G10 is going to take stains over time, and you can already see that beginning. And I can't say I'm in love with the uh, huge signature blade marking on there. Not a, a huge thing. Um, on the ugly front, honestly, there's nothing ugly here. I mean, the, the, the edge fragility could be ugly for a lot of people. Um, for somebody like me in my life, I cut a lot of foam. And so this is absolutely just an, a compelling choice for me. Um, but for a lot of people who have more varied uses, uh, it could be ugly, but it's also the nature of the beast. It's the price you pay. So um, let's go into the final conclusion. And my final conclusion here is that this is a knife that I very much like the idea of. It's a small, gentlemanly knife. It's more of a gentleman's folder. And it's ground with just this absolutely out-of-this-world sharp edge. I mean, on paper, this is the perfect Nick Shabazz knife. It is small, gentlemanly, it cuts like freaking crazy with great fit and finish. Um, there is a lot that I should love here, but in practice, honestly, it kind of loses me because the ergonomics are just not what I'm after. The balance being not super great for my taste, the white G10 isn't just particularly grabbing me, and overall, I, I, I don't know, it just, the, the thickness, it, it's just, it doesn't end up working, and so I kind of come back to a, a, I love the idea here, I love that Spyderco made this, I mean, the flash batch idea is absolutely neat, I think it's a fun way for them to explore new designs with fewer consequences, they haven't made a bazillion of them, so if, uh, if something flops, then they, they, they learn and they move on, I think it's cool, and I, I love seeing that, um, and I also think the price isn't all that bad, 150 bucks for a limited edition, brand new model. I, I feel like that's that's pretty reasonable. And I feel like the Spyderco is also one of few companies that are actually even making knives in this size range. I mean, most companies are making huge freaking, I mean, it, it, this is the competition. I mean, so Spyderco is one of few people doing this, and they're only, I, I think they're the only production company out there that's even willing to release a knife that cuts this well. I mean, Spyderco is at the front of the pack in terms of cutting power. This, the Nalaka, the Chantafante, those knives cut like crazy, and very few people are willing to come anywhere near that. And so I, I absolutely, I, I love the idea and that this knife was made, and I can't wait to see what they're doing with future flash batches. If this is what they started with. Oh man, I'm looking forward to seeing more of it. But ultimately, even though I love the idea of it, practically speaking, it gets me down a little bit, and I end up finding the uh, little Nalaka to feel a little lacking. And uh, I'm afraid that this knife's time in my collection is uh, probably finished. Get it? Finished designer? Uh, okay. Anyways, I hope that this was interesting, that this review was more than just a flash in the pan for you, and that you have yourselves just an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.